Hello, everybody, and welcome to Row 60 Georgia Football Podcast. My name is Clark Gaines. Joining me today, as always, Adam Thornton. Yes, sir, baby. And this is show number 32. And the dogs are starting off 1-0 on the mm. 2022 football season. Adam, what are your general feelings right now in this moment in time? I'm jubilant. Clark. Jubilant. Jubilant is the word, word to describe what I feel right now. I was just on a cloud. We were talking about it. I was just floating on a cloud in the section 335 <laughs> in San, or no, excuse me, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It was just something that I just didn't see coming, Clark. Uh-huh. I did not see it coming. That it was just such a dominant performance like we saw. And I, I was just giddy. I was sitting there thinking, you know, this is an opening game. Every opening game, I'm, I'm critiquing their performance. Like, is this right. going to be the year? Is this going to be the year? Well, of course, we've already had the year. So it's just house money now, Clark. And then th- th- this it just established Saturday, this team's going to be right back in the contention. Everything that we've been saying is come to fruition. And if they keep it up, stay healthy, man. Oh, man, this is it's, going to be great. But just my, one of my favorite and probably my most favorite opening game of the season Ooh. I've seen. Uh, I mean, honestly, when you yeah. talk about from a perspective, just going out and executing just – at a, at a just uh, elite level, like I don't think I've seen in Georgia football before from an opening game standpoint, Clark. What about you? Yeah, not not against a quality opponent like Oregon. Exactly. I mean, obviously, we've seen like great uh, great performances against Buffalo, but yeah. to do it against Oregon is another thing. And you know, even last year we had a we had a good defensive showing, but our offense was lackluster. This Adam, you're right, just a complete domination. Uh, and uh, poor Oregon. I mean, I almost it almost got to a point I started feeling a little bad for them uh, and their fan base, and especially Dan Lanning. Yes. But, you know, it's about us this year. It's, it's going to be about Georgia the whole season, Adam. And what whether or not we play the best football game or not. Right, right. I'm telling you, Clark, what, what was just so amazing about it is, like you said, they were a quality opponent. And I'm telling you, Clark, that's a talented Oregon football team. We talked about it on the preview show. Yep. We talked about it on the call-in show. We've talked about it in the uh, the podcast preview in the game. Mm-hmm. There's some talent in there, yep. Clark. And they've had a physical culture trying to be built there the past few years with the previous coach. And then Dan Land is going to continue it. And they're going to win some games in the Pac-12. Shoot, potentially be the conference champions yep. in the Pac-12, at least in the top two or three so it's a good football team and then mm-hmm. to go out there and just manhandle them yeah. manhandle them i'm talking about like it, it, it just the, the speed the physicality and it just wasn't on the same level and, really I, and, I, and somebody we hadn't talked about that needs some credit for where georgia is and has been somebody who has just been behind the scenes doesn't get the spotlight on him a lot clark but has helped get this program to where it is today is scott sinclair yeah scott sinclair and then guys like ron corson right and every by, I mean, just the best in the business in that aspect mm-hmm. of it, too. And, um, I mean, just the shape our guys were in. Yeah. And, I mean, I, golly, I could just rattle off everything, Clark, with how <laughs> much I was impressed by just everything yesterday. Yes. I mean, I just sat up there, and I had to pinch myself. I I'm know. just sitting there, and I'm, 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 I'm thinking, man, this is just great. Mm-hmm. I can I can just stay watching this forever because yeah. I, it was like well, – and every offensive drive, I was like, surely, you know, this is going to be the drive that's going to stop us, Clark. This right. is going to be the drive where we're not going to But they did. But then third downs come – Bam, convert the third down, get upfield, touchdown. It's uh, it, it's amazing. The offense, I knew they were going to be good, Clark. I knew they were going to be special. But this offense has ramped it up a notch, man. And uh, we got a lot to dive into with yeah. that. Yeah, we definitely do, Adam. We're going to start uh, this episode off with – uh, several announcements once yes. again and then we're going to dive into our uh atmosphere our weekly concession right. stands report Adam, right. i hope you're ready oh i'm ready Carl. Okay, i've been good. waiting for this one we yeah. got some fun facts about this uh most yeah. recent game um talking offense defense special teams later and then uh some keys to the game for yep. the the sanford bulldogs right They're that's the right they're the rolling well. into town that's right from uh, alabama and we won't disrespect the bulldogs no we're not going to so disrespect we're talk the sanford about them bulldogs later. yeah uh, no We've got last week's pick 'em, this week's pick 'em, and then a score prediction for the very end. So nice. a lot, a lot of nice. stuff to go over. That's there. right. That's right. Let's start off by saying this. We want to say thank you to everyone who participated in our call-in show. We had a great turnout, Adam. It was a great event. Always is. 
We really appreciate your calls and your comments and just your viewership. I mean, it was a fun time. It makes uh, it makes uh, us feel real special on a Friday night at eight <laughs> o'clock. Yeah. Uh, people being able to take times out of their busy schedules to uh, to um, spend some time with us talking ball, man. That's what it's all about. Why we wanted to do it and, uh, and enjoyed everybody who called in, everybody that listened. We appreciate it, and there's going to be more to come. You yes. know, kind of what the the format we established last year with it, Clark, is before the opening game and before some bigger games in the schedule so right. uh clark and i haven't really discussed of course i'll definitely be one in, in at florida for amelia island yes. good lord willing and and uh we'll see from there but um it, it, well that's something we're gonna have to sit down and talk about which games are we gonna do that in so just keep your eyes and uh ears peeled out for that and then yes. see what, what's gonna happen on that front and if you're listening to this episode go ahead and start making your picks if you're in our pick em league uh we're picking against the spread so uh not winning outright so if you need to if you have questions about it, just uh, send us a direct message and we'll get you That's help right. out. But uh, Adam, right. how'd you do in your picks last week? Uh, Clark, it was decent. There were some games that um I really should have got that I kicked myself. And I do that every year. Every year, every <laughs> week, there's some games where I'm just back and forth. I hit one team and then I'm like, nah, I should have went with this one. And there were several from uh from Saturday's games that I um did not get. Several of the games that I, I thought I was sure was going to happen. And uh, it, it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to. And uh, that's why we love college football. Yeah. That's why we are so just passionate about this game, not right. only watching Georgia play, but other teams as well. Because any given Saturday, I feel like more or less so than any other sport, you just you don't know. Yeah, you really you, don't. You really have no idea. So, Clark, um, honestly, it was a mediocre pick em week for okay, us. Okay, well, you got, you got a lot more uh, weeks to in order to. That's right. Improve, that's, so. right. Yeah. that's right. That's yeah. right. How about you? Uh, pretty good. Good, 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 good. I, mean, good. I got to stay focused on this That's one, right. though. That's can't, right. That's right. Live in the past. That's right. That's right. All right. Let's briefly touch on the atmosphere of the game yesterday. We're recording this on Sunday. Adam, I was really impressed by how many Georgia fans showed up and showed out. I, I was thinking maybe there are going to be some empty seats, but it really did not seem like there was an empty seat. Um, Georgia fans really bought. Pretty much all the tickets. That Oregon fans didn't. There's, I would say, ninety percent Georgia fans and ten percent. Yes, absolutely, fans. absolutely. Somewhere around that range. Um, I, I think the thing that stands out to me is, of course, uh, it was weird going opening the season at Mercedes Benz Stadium. We're we're used to yeah. playing there in um in December or a bowl game in January. So this is the first time early fall that we've been there, and uh, it was a weird feeling. But it was good to f- see a win in there, right. like we talked about. But what stood out to me, Clark, was the buzz and the energy of this Georgia fan base. There wasn't a national champion. Championship hangover. Yeah. It was let's go. Do it. Wait, there's a, there, you, you could just tell that even the fans had just a new just demeanor about mm. them. Like walking in, like like just the, a monkey was off their back. It, it seemed like more Clark that a lot of the fan base felt like we did. There was nerves going into each season because right. they wanted it to be the one. This was just excitement. It mm. was a party yesterday, mm-hmm. is what it was. Yeah. I just saw people letting loose and enjoying the moment. And that's what we're gonna do now more so than just just being just all tensed up and nervous that like we gotta have it this has got to be the year we got to do it now we're going to enjoy every single week Mm. and enjoy what this team is going to do because Clark we talked about it yesterday this is the golden ages of Georgia football yes 1980 to 1982 or 30 was some very good times very good times but Clark this is going to top it oh this is going to top it mark my words this is going to top it and and um you, you can see the fans just enjoy it and they fed off the team, and the, the team fed off the fans, and it was the loudest I've heard Mercedes Men's Stadium. Really? Or, yes, absolutely wow. the loudest, for sure. It was even louder than when uh, DeAndre Swift in 2017 SEC right. Championship uh, broke that um, broke that run um, to uh, to put the nail in the coffin against Auburn that year to win the SEC Championship. It was hmm. louder than that to me, and um, I, I think that's going to be something that's going to carry through the whole year. Yeah. George fans are going to show up on the road. They're going to show up Sanford. I expect against Sanford's going to be a packed house. You're you're going to hear uh, um, Neil, uh, not Brooke Whitmire um, come over and say, you're defending national champion yes. Georgia Bulldogs when they Ooh, run out of the tunnel, wait. and everybody's going to be juiced, and it's going to oh, be a yeah. good time, Clark. Yes, yes. Because it is the glory days, yes. baby. Adam, Don't get better than this. Give us that weekly concession stands report. How, all right. How, were, how did things go right. in Mercedes-Benz right. right. Stadium? Well, of course, we already talked about a Mercedes-Benz right. hot dog. We, we uh, reviewed that, critiqued that last year, and um, we, we went with the hot dogs last year. Of course, we did, Clark. But I'm going to take a different approach this year. Okay. I'm going to take a broader approach that um, critique different foods. Hot dog will be one of yep. them sometimes. Yep. And then just the overall concession stand experience that by, might be unique to the facilities that sure. we're at. Okay. You, you get, you get right, right, right. 
right. Where I'm at like with this. It. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to spotlight in a Mercedes Benz Stadium is uh is, is something that they do there that you do not see in pro venues. Really, pro anywhere venues else. or any yeah. any any uh collegiate venues as well. I'm going with the refillable souvenir cup and the refillable fountain drink yes. fountain. Yes. So being able to go get your cup, get your souvenir mug, and then go to a, a fountain and uh, and get whatever you want, whenever you want it. And you don't have to stand in the lines. You just go get it pregame, mm-hmm. and then you can just go as many times as you want. It's unlimited refills, man. Go get you some ice. If you want some Minute Maid lemonade one time, you go get some Minute Maid lemonade. And shoot, if it's, um, you know, about four minutes left in the second half or in the second yeah in the second quarter, and you're like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm thirsty. And you don't have to battle the concession stand lines building up already for halftime. Mm-hmm. You go down there, and you say, I want a Coke this time. You get a Coke, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I like that. I like that aspect. I'm going to highlight that and give them a big check mark every time good. we go there. I enjoy that. A good, secure lid fits on these souvenir cups as well. Yes. And it's got a nice little place that, you, you know, that uh, the lid's there for it secure where you, you don't spill over your drink and a nice little hole that, that's got a kind of a kind of a groove, I'd say, right. car, uh, that's perfect placement um, to put on your lip to to be able to have a, just a good good flow of yes. your drink. Yes. You, you know, so uh, if, if that's the option you want to go with by putting a lid on the cup. So I would really, I really I appreciate that. I haven't seen that. That is unique to that venue okay. to me. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of it i mean i think if you i think uh you can max out your dollar for that for sure uh, i think they're like 450 and you can uh, if for you get, a refillable if you get, if you get a mul- if you get if you get multiple refills per game man but i oh, encourage yeah, everybody gracious. to try to get a handful of them per yeah, game yeah. so anyway that's uh that's what my souvenir i like it. um the, my concession stand report is going to be is a refillable souvenir cup that you can refill yourself at mercedes-benz stadium check it out that's Bam. a good thing i like that's that it. thank you arthur blake <laughs> thank you arthur blake Okay. Build a football team now. All right. Yeah, ahead, that's ahead, true. That's true. Oh, man. Adam Kirby is now 7-0 and in season openers. He has yet to lose Dang one. Right. Uh, he's played several good opponents, uh, North Carolina being one, I guess yep. you could throw in that category. Clemson and then Oregon. Um, Georgia is tied for the largest season opening win versus a ranked opponent by any team in the AP poll era. They had we outscored Oregon by 46 points. The last time somebody did that was Alabama, and they defeated USC 52 to six in 2016. Yeah. I remember that boat race. I that remember that game. game. I remember that game. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, man. Uh, of course, this staff was ready to go. They had a good game plan. They yeah, they're familiar with what Dan Landon was trying to accomplish on defense, and Todd Munkin, who uh, I would say is the coach. Of the day, mm-hmm. I would say give him the coach of the week. Uh, what his scheme was, Clark, unreal. I know we're getting to the offensive side of it, but yes, Kirby, of course, had everybody prepared. Everybody was ready to go. Could not have asked for any better. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the largest margin of victory for Georgia against the AP top team since, uh, yeah, forty-four to nothing against Florida in nineteen eighty-two. Wow, believe. It was uh, was uh, um, the last one that was about as large as what it Man. was Saturday. And yeah. even Saturday was even more of a um, larger deficit. And so I'm telling you, man, um, very, very exciting to just go do that and manhandle a program mm-hmm. like that. I mean, uh, the past couple of years and and just this area right now is just it's uncharted waters, Clark. Yes, and it just man, it's exciting. But thank goodness we have a leader who who has been that's right that that's, that's right. out of the sea. That's right. So, I mean, I'm telling you what, Clark, uh, it, it was a statement. We talked about it. It was a statement to show the world that we're here. And and I I, I kind of perused um, some message boards of yeah. some rival fans, and they're, they're starting to wake up and feel it. Good. They're like, they're like uh, Georgia, Georgia's free. We've been Clark. trying to tell I'm them all season, trying, but they, they don't believe it. they're us. saying, like, Georgia's going to be a problem for years to come. He said, uh, as much as we hate to say it, this is a good football and team. I, Last year wasn't a fluke. And they're starting to really buy in that this is another Alabama-type dynasty building. And, uh, you know, there, there's some a few of them who are who are still in just shock of it. Don't, yeah. don't want to admit it yet. But it's coming around. Some of their brethren are really just saying, hey, man, you got to back off that ledge. It's okay. We'll be all right. <laughs> but – they are. I'm, I'm. I'm serious, Clark. People are waking up to the idea that this Georgia football team is going to be right back in the conversation again. When a lot of people didn't think so. We, I mean, we've talked months about that, but Saturday proved it. And I know we got a lot of football to play, but Saturday proved it that everything that we've been talking about, 
this year definitely could come true. Yes. So, I mean, people are waking up the idea this Georgia football team ain't going nowhere. This is a dynasty in the making, club. Absolutely. And it's just something we have dreamed about for a long, long time, man. Absolutely. Uh, no, not my football over there. <laughs> All right. All right. Five different Bulldogs scored, Adam, a touchdown yesterday. Led by yes. Lad McConkey, one with Kendall Milton, one with Stetson, one with A.D. Mitchell, and one with Kenny Mack. That is just efficiency at its finest. It's distributing the ball. Uh, to to all your playmakers there, and um, man, we're going we're about to talk about Munkin's game plan in just a second. Kirby Smart also said this, Adam, and I found this really interesting that he and Dan Lanning agreed to talk after the game. I'm assuming in some uh, Zoom meeting some or Zoom? something to talk about the tendencies they noticed with each other's teams because you know they want to help e- help each other improve yep. um, one another's teams. And I, I yep. respect that. I think that's really cool. Uh, chances are we're not going to line up against Oregon anymore this season. So yeah, um, I think that's that's cool. So that is good, Clark. Um, I think you see now in the Zoom air that a lot of, uh, co- especially in the offseason, coaching staffs are meeting with other coaching staffs, going over that type of stuff. NFL um, guys are meeting with college guys, kind of that deal. And I think that's always happened. That, like They would fly out to go to NFL facility or other teams' campuses and meet. Mm-hmm. But now with Zoom, yeah. you could do that with just a click of a button. Right. I think you're seeing more of that now, Clark. So um, that's, that's our, good, man. There's that's our good. shameless plug for Zoom right there. Yeah. We're not yeah, paying to, to say pay that. Us. They need to pay <laughs> us. But um, that, that would be good. Get some uh, Dan Lane. And a very smart guy, somebody who will be successful at Oregon. Yes. Um, and uh, I, I have no doubt about that, man. So uh, I love that, that they're both – you can just tell there's much love between and respect right. between the two of them. So that's awesome. That's yeah. good stuff. It even seemed like after the game, Adam, when they were shaking hands, that – I don't know what Kirby said. I mean, it was a good 10 seconds they were talking, and that's pretty long for a post-game handshake. Yeah, yeah, it was. But – it seemed like Dan Lanning walked away with maybe a tear in his eye. I don't yeah, know if it I was seeing that right. Definitely a longer handshake uh, with Kirby Smart and Dan Lanning than Kirby Smart and Dan Mullen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. It, it did. And I, I'm, I'm sure Kirby just told a man that he loved him. And uh, thank you. You helped get George at this point and brought a lot of guys here right. that we wouldn't have without you. And, um, and, and of course, I think that that's, it's, it had to be emotional for Dan. Sure. I mean, golly, lining up against guys that you went in their homes, you recruited, team that you love, uh, to take the promotion to go there. And then have to face them the very mm-hmm. first game you're at. Mm-hmm. And it's already emotional being the head coach of a, of a team like that, but much less playing your former team – the first game so um i bet it was a lot of emotions running through dan lannan's mind yeah um i tell you man dan lannan's message has to be to that team though and i hope that's, that's what he said i'm sure he did was hey look i got the blueprint of how to get where they're at just believe in me just trust the process and we will get there mm-hmm. and you can see the potential and how far away we are from right. where we need to be at but hey just 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 trust in me trust in the process and we'll get there yeah. that was a golden opportunity to do that and i think oregon will be a better football team because of what happened yesterday yeah yeah i agree i agree i have a lot of respect for dan oh, okay yeah. uh let's let's talk a little bit about georgia's offense and mm-hmm. my gosh adam we've been saying this a lot of people in the bulldog nation have been saying this this could be and i'll just say it right now this will be the best georgia Woo! football offense we've Ooh. ever seen Ooh. ever preach I mean, Preach, Carl. I'm, I'm expecting Preach, Carl. 42, 43 points per game. I, and we may have scored more or less than that in years past I, with other offenses, but I think we may even get to that 45 mark. I'm, it I'm, could be. I'm telling you, Carl, I, it, I, it, it's amazing. The thing is staying healthy. The yeah. thing is staying healthy and continue to be hungry. Don't peak at the first game of the season. Right. Continue to get better because I guarantee you, all them coaches told them that there's places they could get better at. Yes. And there is as flawless as it looked to us in the in the 335 upper deck level <laughs> up there. It, there. There's places to improve upon. So if they just don't get content and they 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 stay hungry and improve every week, which I think they will, and the injury bug stays away from us, it is going to be very special yeah. part. Um, Todd Munkin been the missing piece and mm-hmm. and and sent and Kirby's uh and Kirby's um, program that he has built here the past few years. Todd Munkin was the missing piece. It had to be an offensive coordinator like Todd Munkin with the respect of Todd Munkin and the ability to scheme like Todd Munkin to get Kirby Smart to kind of let go of the offense a little bit. Give it to a guy that he can just trust and let him run it and Munkin is a guy who wouldn't be here unless he had full control of that yeah. offense, Clark. That's Point right. blank 
period. And now in year three of that, it is it's just humming, rolling on all cylinders. I think it's made Kirby smarter, better coach because he's had, can take a more hands-off approach on the offense mm-hmm. and focus on other things that a head coach has to focus on. And you got one of the most elite in the business on that side of the ball calling plays. And uh, every player that was in it last year, and you guys are what, – what you like to see is progression, Clark. And anything you do, the longer you're at a place and your your job, whatever, you like to see progression. People mm-hmm. progress. And, and, and what we saw is everybody on offense that came back this year, there was no regression. Everybody took that step forward, man. And that is exciting. Yeah. That is unbelievable. And his – just everything is just – it's blown my mind. I have not seen a and been this excited about offense in Georgia football history. Without Me neither. A without neither. a doubt. Without a doubt. I can't. Yeah. Uh, you go back to those Bobo years and uh, – <laughs> And so those were good years. There were some good. There were some. some uh, Aaron Murray had some dang good offenses, you know, 2012, 2013. But you're right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, this would be look about James Coley and uh, what's the Schottenheimer that one year was rough. Yeah, yeah. But you look back at those years, and man, you start to appreciate what we have now. And I think some people they still want that LSU 2019 Joe Burrow throw it down the field. Adam, the most interesting thing about what we did yesterday in the bins was we threw for 439 passing yards. Yeah. We were 30 for 37 through the air. Those Dang people right, who've been man. craving that got it. They, they got, got a taste it. of it. They, and let me tell you something, that's going to continue to happen this season. I guarantee you we're going to see more games where we throw for more yes. than uh, – yes. Then we rush. Well, the so. good thing is, and if uh, it, and if we need to run the football, we can run the football. Yeah, that, this yeah. offensive line in the back set. We have the the beautiful thing about it is with the tools and the toolbox that Todd Munkin has, he is able to just do whatever the defense. What uh, this defense is pick your poison, man. Mm-hmm. What do you want to stop? What do you want to try to focus yep. on? A key in on and uh, and and then. Munkin and has the ability to scheme against that. So it'll be different from week to week, I feel like, Clark. But you're right. Being able to throw the football around and something big about what it has is everybody's selfless on that offensive right. side of the football, Clark. Not afraid to get out there and put a hat on somebody to block for their teammate. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, don't have to just have the most targets. I mean, and and the ball was distributed to multiple people yep. yesterday, talking about a lot of guys had touchdowns, a lot of guys caught the football, man. And it was just beautiful how spread out – um, Munkin and Stetson Bennett and that Georgia offense had that Oregon defense caught. Mm-hmm. And also one thing, too, is the game plan. They completely took those stud – Middle linebackers, inside linebackers, out of the football yeah, game. Clark. Noah Sewell and um and uh what what was his name? Justin, Justin Flo was guys that were just re- non factors in it, non factors no. in it whatsoever, man. So it's almost like that. I got to be honest with you, and and we talk about these defenders we've played, and and uh, let's just take last year for example. Yeah. Um, you know we we talked so much about Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah. How big of a playmaker was he in, right. in that in that orange bowl game and even will anderson the national championship game yes. i mean I, I i find it really interesting that none of these guys that we talk about actually do anything in the game I, I, yeah this well, is offense i don't know i agree man well you think about it too is you always talk about defensive coordinators and defensive guys scheming to take a big time receiver quarterback or somebody running back out of the game you yeah. know try to get them out but uh, on the flip side, the offense coordinator does that too with these studs on right. defense. And Munkin has been good at that too. These mm-hmm. just playmakers being able to make them a non-factor in it. Yeah. And um, that, that's been something that, that's special. That's the talent that he has. And um, something I think that uh, is going. you're just going to continue to see. But what I love so much was how just smooth this offense looked. Or how confident everybody looked out there. Yeah. Stetson Bennett just looked composed in the pocket. Just as smooth. Even smoother than he was last year. The confidence is there, man. And the offensive line could be the best offensive line in Georgia history if they stay healthy. Yeah. It felt like he had a million seconds to throw the I football. Know. Some of those, 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 man. He just sat back there in the pocket, just waited, 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 let plays develop. Good route running, good patience. And bam, it opened up. And, mm-hmm. and it it was crazy to see how much time he had to throw the football. And um, another thing that stood out to me, Clark, uh, Kenny McIntosh, a guy who I picked is going to be who I like as the most valuable player on the offense this season, I think. Uh, what's beautiful about it is – if something's not there downfield for Stetson, you have that check down route with Kenny McIntosh, who is just lethal 
catching the football out of the out of the backfield like James Cook was. Shoot, might even be better. Might, I mean, it's yeah. that, I don't know. Might even be better by the end of the season. But well, a guy who, uh, if, if there's just one guy on him, a linebacker or so in the flats, he could get the football turned up field. And he has that kind of. We were talking about this yesterday, Clark. He's got that uh, DeAndre Swift kind of mm-hmm. kind of move where he just plants that inside of that right leg and then cuts back inside and makes the guy miss. Like yeah. Swift was so good at doing. And uh, when you do that, man, and 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 he makes that first guy miss that first guy ain't going to get him. That's some big yardage right there. And that'll demoralize the defense when you have good coverage in the secondary downfield and it's just constant uh, dumping off the running back and getting um, getting a lot of yak. Yes, yak. Yard getting a lot catch. of yak yeah. after that with the old RB man. Uh, special. Just a lot, of, a lot of options. Right. Uh, Georgia's offense line, Adam, you know, we did have a couple of plays early on. Uh, I don't know if I don't know, maybe the running back didn't pick up the blitz or something, but there were a couple of plays where Stetson was forced to get out of the pocket. I was yeah. really impressed by uh, his ability to to escape the pocket, to, and he threw yes. it out of bounds, which is wise, and that yes. shows maturity. He has grown. There was another pass where he checked down to Kenny Mack one time, I believe, and um, he he threw a he, – he, pr- he was under pressure. He stood tall in the pocket. That's what your coach yes. should do, especially at that level, and uh, he delivered the ball right over – um, his head, which is once again what you're supposed to do. You don't drop that back shoulder, and so delivered a good ball, Adam. I mean, he, he's he's grown, it's shown, and uh, I'm really excited to see Stetson. And hey, this is one thing you mentioned too uh, during the game. <laughs> I started laughing at this, and you got I think you got a little upset that I started laughing at this, <laughs> but it? but you told me, Adam, you said, and I believe this was right after the whole uh, the scamper and around where he was under right. pressure right on the goal line and right. oh, yeah, threw yeah, it yeah. to Lad McConkey somehow yeah. just miraculous. That was his Heisman moment. But Adam, you said this is starting to look like Johnny Manziel, like well, a Johnny Manziel kind of thing. It did not look like a Johnny Manziel. Oh, it did. Type it type sure play, did. Yeah. And so we started debating: Is Stetson going to be? I, in New York. You know, somebody laughed at me for mentioning that on the podcast. I got a text from Russell Dow. I was going to call him out <laughs> saying, I almost wrecked my car when I heard you said Stetson can be in New York. Well, yesterday, was that not Heisman caliber numbers, Carl? Was it, it not was. Heisman caliber numbers? It was. Special things can happen. He's, what, 24 years old, man? Mm-hmm. He, when you have the maturity that he has, now that he's got the swagger that he has, man, special things could happen. And, and sometimes there's just guys that can't do no wrong. And... I mean, like a Johnny Manziel. Now, I'm not saying it not. He's definitely not to the Joe Burrow sure. level. But you get what I'm saying. Just stuff that can happen. That plays are made. That you you have no you know rhyme or reason how they get made. Man, right. some some people just got that it factor. Just got that magic. And Stetson Bennett's got that it factor. Clark. He's proved it time and time again. So why does it not even just step up another notch this season mm-hmm. with the it factor of it? Just making plays like that that um that touchdown throw to Lad McConkey right before halftime, Clark. That was just yeah. unbelievable. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just just something something's magic about the kid and uh i might eat crow for it later on but right now man it's looking like it's just gonna keep building Mm -hmm. and the uh the uh the story of him man is just gonna be just keep progressing throughout the season i mean if he if if everything keeps rolling like it is and he puts up the numbers that he put up yesterday throughout the season of course he'll be in new york how could he not be in new york that's true i mean he, he accounted for 368 all-purpose yards. Obviously, he had that neck and bootleg uh, run there at the goal line. That was beautiful. Great play call. Once again, I mean, right. Malkin called such a great play. And he's getting really creative. Ran a lot of screens uh, that were blocked well. Shout out to everybody on the receiving court. They did amazing yeah. blocking on the perimeter. And, Adam, that's something we saw last year, too, and it's carried over to this right. team. Right. Um, I, I love that. I love to see downfield You're blocking because right, that's when you turn those five, six yard gains into 17, 24, you know, 36 yard dang right. g- uh, play. So that's important. That's what I love, Clark. It, you saw these guys play till the whistle was blown, yeah. man, and just selfless football. Like you said, what I love to see in big Darnell Washington out there, just a road grader, man, mm-hmm. a guy who's so good at blocking. And, and when he gets downfield, he puts his helmet on a, on another helmet can just uh, demoralize the defense. Yeah. And then when he gets the ball in space, like we saw, and you got a big six, seven guy coming at you like that, that and it's going to be a head-on collision. Uh, you of go course, he's going to die at his legs. Yeah. Then he's going to hurdle you like that. So, um, I was really happy to see his demeanor. He looked very happy out there. He about broke Lad McConkey's back. Um, after one of his touchdowns, I saw him like yeah. jump up. 
on Lad, and I thought, oh my God, poor Lad, he'd kill the man. <laughs> he'd squish him like a bug if he landed on oh, Clark. But man. it was Darnell seemed after all that off season chatter, what you heard, he seemed like he is having a good time. That makes me very happy to see him right. back. He's going to be a key contributor. He's going to get the football more. Brock Bowers is somebody who, of course, they they keyed in on yeah. and had a couple good catches, man. But when you key in on somebody like Brock and take a man, an extra man, having to having to key in on him, that opens up for other plays. Yes. And I think you saw that take advantage of. So it's a defense coordinator's worst nightmare. SEC defense coordinators watched that film yesterday and was like, oh, my God. <laughs> How do we defend? How do what we are we going to do? Just pick your now. poison. Just pick yeah. your poison, man. And uh, it, it, awesome, awesome. And what I love about it is everybody did their job, and there's not, to me, just one big just superstar out there. Clark. Right. Everybody is good, and they play good together. They jail. The leadership is there. People were holding other people accountable. And to see that in game one, to see that chemistry in game one, that is exciting, Clark. Yeah. That is exciting because it's only going to get stronger from here. Mm-hmm. You're not going to lose it. It's only going to get stronger from here. Right. Uh, Adam, I asked you mid-game, I said, you know, outside of Stetson, who is your offensive MVP? I mean, because truly, you could yeah. you could close your eyes and point to the field and you yeah. pick one. I, I mean, I, I said mean, I said Kenny Mack. Kenny Mack, man, yeah. I, I think he's special. I really like Kenny Mack. With the progression he's had, we've watched him over the yeah. last few years, has been awesome to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, he can stay healthy, but he is a force, Clark. And oh, yeah. catching the ball out of the field. And Kendall a Mark, too. Kendall, Kendall Milton looked good. It was good to see that kid healthy, man. Hopefully, that could stay for the duration of the season as well. Just a great one-two punch at running back like George has had. Juan Edwards came in there and mm-hmm. ran hard. Branson Robinson got some time coming in, Clark, yeah. and um, uh, especially a lot of guys touch the football. Marcus Rosemey, Jack Saint, mm-hmm. I think he looks the best since probably the healthiest he's he has been since really the 2020 Florida game right. when he um, when he had that leg injury uh, in the end zone down there to open up that game. And I, he looked good. He looked like a, just a good president. A.D. Mitchell is going to be a freak. He's oh, going to be gosh. an absolute stud, man. Yeah. Dylan Bell, young receiver, he's going to be a guy that's going to be good. Mm-hmm. I mean, just uh, the, the the receiving core is it's not it's not sexy per se mm-hmm. you know it's not really sexy yeah i'd say it's not really sexy you don't look at those guys and it's not like those ohio state receivers yeah. or anything Six, or the old three, alabama four. ones of old or the past few years you know but they are so good at what they do and efficient at what they do and man it, it, it is a very underrated wide receiver court and brian mcclendon i cannot wait to see these guys develop more now that they have brian mcclendon have had a all a full off season with brian mcclendon man i think you got to give him props too for what he's going to do for this offense as well yeah. especially that receiver room that he's ahead of yeah uh one thing we did too offensively and this is kind of the last thing i'll talk about um is i love we it. and i watched some film today adam mm-hmm. and i got the tv copy i don't have the coaches and with my little remote and oh laser yeah laser and pointing everything but, out uh, yeah but anyway we ran so much uh out of this bunch formation you saw uh let's see darnell brock and lad in a bunch formation and yeah. i'm telling you that is going to be hard to stop because there's there so, so many, many things, things you can do, you can do out yep. of that man you, you can run the tall sweep we tried that on the goal line didn't quite get it with kendall milton there oh yeah um, tunnel screens tunnel screens i mean you, you bubble screens you can run the I mean, star i mean there's there so many so things much. you could do out of that as least and then you can plug in other guys you can plug in kiaris jackson and mm-hmm. oscar delper eric gilbert coming in like that yep. and um i mean it, there's just so many guys there's depth there's depth and um i feel like the rotation in the offensive line you saw devin willick play you saw xavier trust play yeah. you saw marius mims play you, you could rotate guys in Clark, and each one just seems like they did their job yesterday there wasn't anybody who just stood out i sure. felt like to me that was a glaring like weakness on yeah. the offensive side of the football from the one deep to the two deep right i mean it's amazing it's amazing yeah okay last thing about offense just a few numbers for y'all Georgia went nine for ten on third downs. If we wow. keep that up, that's that's going to win us a lot wow. of football games. That's right awesome. There. Uh, that's efficiency. That's huge. That's that freaking huge. Yep. That is. 132 rushing yards. A little weird. You don't really hear that. Yep. I mean, in Georgia nah. football, but yeah. but that's okay. I mean, we threw the ball around, and I liked it. Uh, 11.9 yards awesome. per pass. I mean, we got the ball downfield, and oh, yeah. you know, and uh, stretched the field vertically too. So, oh uh, yeah. Adam, did you see Stetson in the end zone about break his leg? Uh, Clark, we, we, we got to address that. Yes. We got to address that, Clark. Um, 
it's time to put a stop to that. Yeah. Well, uh, what we're talking uh, about is when he celebrated. I believe it was when he ran it in, right? Yes. Everybody knows, like, you go in, maybe the lineman picks up a running back after yeah. a touchdown, or you go up with a good little shoulder bump. You you elevate. You right. get up in the air. <laughs> yeah. You get up in the air, and you're excited. Get the, the helmet pad or yes. whatnot. But what I'm saying is, Clark, I think we need to do away with that trend because we've seen it before as Georgia football fans sure. in 2013 at Clemson, South Carolina. Malcolm Mitchell. First game of the year, tears his ACL, misses the season, leaping like that, doing mm-hmm. some leaping. So let's ban the leaping, Clark. Let's go ban back to some traditional leap. celebrations. How about just old high five? Yeah. Just a, yeah. a high five or, or maybe a, just even a, fist a little more hip thing, a fist bump. Or a hug. Or maybe a hug, like a two a two pat hug. Two pat, yeah. Two pat yeah. hug or a two pat, you know, shoulder like celebration. But let's keep our feet planted. Let's keep our feet planted. Yes. Let's not have any elevation and uh let, let's stay healthy out there. That's what I say. Oh man. So um I, I think that's something that it, it was very once you, I mean, we didn't see cool. it in lifetime. No, because I had a hard time even just seeing the numbers on the jersey. That's the first time I've sat in the upper deck of a stadium and struggled to figure out to dissect what number is on the jersey. On the jersey, well, and I tried so hard. To I've got two theories. Well, I got one theory, Adam, okay. and I think right. it's the block numbers. We're and well, okay, it's the block numbers, and it's the fact that we're trying to learn. The, we're trying to put yeah. numbers with names and, you know, well, bodies. Yeah, yeah, man, I, I agree. The block numbers, and it, it's something that, though, I was like, oh, my God, I can. I used to could just, just hammer it. Know exactly <laughs> what it was. Right. Like, man, I, when, when Chris Smith picked off that football, like, that a boy Javon Buller? Look at that <laughs> freshman go. Another yeah. freshman. Is that a boy Javon yeah. getting jacked oh, up or some man. Javon Buller getting an interception? <laughs> and then I thought, wait a minute. And then I squinted my eyes a little bit, and I was like, man, I need contacts, Clark. I yeah. need contacts. It's number 29. No, better it's yet. Number 29. It's number 29. We need a pair of binoculars. Binoculars up there to be able to I see, I think man. it's time. Oh, but yeah, but the 22 and the 29 got a little confusing I'm up there for me. But I made an idiot out of myself getting fired up for some Javon Buller, who I was really excited about. Well, he's good sure old he, Christopher Smith. I'm sure he know? played uh, his uh, coverage played, well. well. Yeah, so. I'm sure he did. Sure he did. But yeah, so that, oh, that was man. a little bit of a struggle. We got to we gotta, um, we gotta maybe do some eye exercises <laughs> and kind of strengthen the eyesight. Yeah going forward oh, man. Um, here. But anyway, so uh, that, that was something that started to derail the conversation. That was a really big uh, big um, problem for me yesterday. Personally. Me too. If we're talking about fan adversity, that was for what I <laughs> fan had. Fan adversity. Yep. Well, speaking of Christopher Smith, let's go to our defense, and they had a heck of a Boom, game as man. well. Um, I'm going to start off with Christopher let's Smith. Start off with Christopher Smith, Clark. I think he's coming into his own, Adam. Dang right, uh, I man. believe he had something like six, seven tackles. He obviously had that beautiful pick, read that really yeah. well. And then he had a gorgeous tackle for loss, came up, uh, ran the alley, filled the gap, and just popped uh, Oregon's running back for a loss. I mean, he almost is – it's reminiscent a little bit of Lewis seen and, and his ability to step up and run support. I, I yeah, love man. that about a safety. And uh, you, you want you want a guy who's who's aware, who's looking out for that, especially those outside runs, because that's what these teams are going to start doing is attacking us on the outside, Adam. No team in America is going to run between nah. the tackles against Georgia this year. It's not happening. No. Nah. No, nah, I tell you what, Clark, um, uh, it, it's fun to see Christopher Smith where he's at, develop into a big leader in that defense side of football. Playmaker last year, we remember having him coming in, really, really learning about him after Richard LeCount's uh, accident after the Kentucky game in 2020 when right. Christopher Smith had to be plugged in in Jacksonville for a while and really the whole duration of the season in 20. What he did last year and now where he is at, I mean, he had a big hit. It would have been a long pass completion and good form tackle yeah. to pop the ball loose, not targeting or anything and got a stinger off of that. But a guy who's definitely a leader on that back end of the defensive side of the football in a back end in a secondary that is full of young freshman talent, Clark. Mm. Man, that secondary. Gosh. Man, that secondary. I, who should we talk about I, next? I mean, who you want to talk about? I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room, and that's Malachi Stark, <laughs> uh, the kid from Jefferson, five star guy coming in as a true freshman, look unbelievable. I know. But, I mean, any like, other like word, he had already uh, played Division yeah, One football. I mean, I, I think the quickness of breaking into the football is what stood out to me. Yeah, he could have had a pick six um, there towards uh, the in the in the second half there, yeah. where he jumped and broke up a pass that uh, he just seemed like he was so quick at jumping jumping to the football and uh, bre- uh, breaking up passes, man. And that that interception that he had early on was. 
was just beautiful. Being able to, 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 to get back there in coverage, get turn his head around, find the football, dive backwards, and being able to, to, to pull that in, man, was just an yeah. unbelievable play for a true freshman to make in his first ever college football game right. on that big of a stage court. And I will say this, too. It wasn't – you know, sometimes you look at those interceptions and you think, man, that's just a bad throw by the quarterback. I mean, anybody could have caught no, that. No, that was but good. this was not a bad pass no. by Bo Nix. We're no. about to talk about Bo <laughs> Nix. Uh, Bo, Bo and four. Bo and four, man. Uh, but, you know, yeah, I mean, he threw a great pass, I thought. And then – but, golly, Malachi Starks, that speed – uh, and, and just his ability to to make that play, his flexibility. I mean, that's that's awesome. I, I tell you, Clark, I, the secondary right now is some of the best talent we've ever seen. In the I University agree. of Georgia in there. These guys, of course, has Kirby specialty. The the position he he played in one that he favors. He's biased towards, of course. And um, uh, fr- shout out to Fran Brown, yeah, um, new coach back there. And um, I, I think there's some guys who you're going to see grow up this year, and guys that we're going to see the next couple years in Athens that are going to be very special. Right. I like that there's a mix of some veteran guys back there, the William Pools, uh, Dan Jackson, who's got a big year under his belt, and, of course, Christopher Smith, we just alluded to, back there to help these guys. But the raw talent that these freshmen have, that the Javon Bullards have, that the uh, Kamari Lassiter, a guy mm-hmm. number three over there who did a great job, and Keely Ringo, yeah. of course, obviously, another guy that's, that's a big leader there. Um, opposite of Keely Ringo, there's just guys that you can plug in and plug out. Um, and we saw it different a lot. We saw Sometimes William Poole was in the game at Star. We saw sometimes that Javon Bullard was in there. Malachi Starks kind of rotated Star, free safety. Dan Jackson came in there. Chris Smith. I mean, a lot of just different guys that were back there um, that that are going to be special and uh, guys that aren't in that starting rotation that could easily be starting anywhere else in the country. That's very true. And um, but but I like how it's just utilized that you have different people in in different formations and stuff mm-hmm. and and you you can plug and play them and these guys are only going to get better Clark yeah. I mean three three of the starters were true freshmen in the back end that's crazy and um, guys who uh, who only are going to get better get more reps get more experience but right. dang they look good they dang do. they look good for true freshmen coming in Clark yeah. they look real good and once again that gets me excited now yeah. golly man it wasn't South Dakota State we were playing mm. it was Dagum Oregon uh, uh, oh, a, a lot crazy. of good Division One talent running around out there man and yeah. and uh i mean that was gonna be that was a big question mark where's how big of the drop off is gonna be that george is gonna have man and i'm telling you yes there's gonna be some we'll talk about some areas that i think they need to be approved upon on the defense side of the football but you couldn't to me ask for better with a lot of the new guys coming in plugging and playing for uh for um for what george's defense did yesterday i've given up three points like they did kind of yeah. a bend but don't break type deal right. making big plays when they had to and um and uh it's they're just gonna get better because that's what we talked about is we have to be patient with this defense mm-hmm. at the beginning of the year let them grow let them find their identity let them come into their own the we really need the offense to help carry the defense well yesterday both of them showed out and uh it might be ahead of schedule for what we think for this defense <laughs> but uh that, that this is only going to get more elite on the defensive side of the football court. Right. Um, I think the front seven looked really good too, Adam. I, um, I don't know. One of my points of concern was I don't know if we got enough pressure. And listen, I know Oregon has a good offensive line. We talked about yeah. that before. But I just I, – I, I, that, that would be one thing I'd like to see more right. of going forward is more pressure. And we really didn't blitz that much. No, I mean, no. we, we stayed back. We played a lot of zone. And uh, kept a lot of us, a lot of it in front of us, but um, and you know that's why they got some of those nickel and dime plays, yeah. and and I get it, but uh, but man, I'd love to get to the quarterback a little bit more this season, and uh, you know. Yeah, some havoc. I think so, Clark. Um, a lot of guys, of course, being replaced in the front seven. Right. That, that's a, a position group that had some generational talent there last year that we saw, and we kind of saw where that that gap needs to be filled at on um on Saturday was yeah. uh, one thing that stood out to me, Clark, was that what we had in the Kobe Dean and Quay Walker in the inside, the sideline to sideline speed. When you had a running back get out on the edge, how fast that sideline to sideline speed that we had was that maybe some of the guys in there right now, Munden and Dumas Johnson don't have yet. And maybe it's just, maybe it was some of a kind of a, I mean, freaks look good, but it just look a little bit slower right there. But maybe it's just having to catch up the speed of the game. First yeah, call. Yeah. I mean, not necessarily the, the lack of physical attributes, but guys who just kind of got to get, get, 
comfortable with their role and their position and reading offenses and, and keeping up with the pace of the college game and being in there. And I think something that's going to happen. I mean, I think there were some times where there were some underneath crossing routes that we got confused on that Oregon was able to capitalize from big games, kind of dinking it over that first level right there and um, and mixing our linebackers up a little bit in coverage and, and getting some big yards on there that, of course, is going to be um, going to be talked about and addressed. But overall, it was great. Definitely can improve on the run defense, Clark. I think that's something that the coaches are going to hammer – hammer home with is that we could get better um with our when our run stopping defense and uh and i think uh and i think we will we'll see it we'll see it so i mean of course there was going to be a little bit of a drop off but for all in all i couldn't ask for a better defense performance this this defense is going to be elite and very good yet again man and um mm-hmm. man it's special i love seeing that goal line stand at the end of the game and uh yeah. and seeing the first team guys cheer those other guys on hold them accountable like you're not gonna let them cross that goal line and just that that's what makes up a championship football team clark is playing to the whistles blown to the very end of the game yeah. man like yeah. that and uh it was awesome it was awesome got a lot of great, yeah young guys playing um rotating yeah love to see that Mikael Williams, true Mikhail freshman. Williams. Other guys on the defensive yep. line. I mean, golly, these guys got it. When they grow up, Clark, what is it going to be? This defense is going to be just special again, yeah. man. Yeah. It's a going to be special again. A lot of sophomore talent, too, you know. Uh, yes. Smile, Smile Mondin, Mondin. Uh, and uh, Jamin Dumas Johnson, yep. guys who are just – all of them, Clark, are going to keep getting better each week. And they looked dang good yesterday. They did. They sure did. It's scary to think. It's scary to think. Yeah. Man, you know, all I've wanted is for my favorite football team, Clark, to be kind of the the ones that people are scared of. They tremble <laughs> a little bit when they see them on the schedule. Right. That I want to walk into another stadium and that fan base be scared to death. Yes. I mean, that, that you have grown men just peeing their pants because they're scared <laughs> to death what's going to happen on their football field, their favorite oh, team. Oh, man. Yeah, Oregon fans, oh. God bless them. They were – They. I don't know if they knew – I didn't think they, they didn't know it was going to be at that level. Yeah. They they probably thought oh, we were going to get beat, man, but they, they did not know that it was going to get that bad, Clark. What about the atrocious call? Uh, I can't, was it ju- – wait, who was it? Oh, it was, was, uh, it was Kamari Lester. Lester. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a football play, Clark. He was a little bit high on the tackle. I mean, of course, he was just wrapping them up, making them play, and making sure he kept them wrapped up and just getting them to the ground. I do not see where that was unnecessary roughness at all. It was not like that forward progression had been stopped and he was just driving them back and then took it a step too far, spun them around and slammed them. He was just trying to make a tackle and a football play that has been around for 100-plus years now, Clark. Golly, man. I mean, I mean what, what are we going to do? I mean, what it's going to be in about five or six more years we're going to be pulling flags. It's going to be flag football. That's, that's the direction we're going for. Yeah, what, uh, you made the comment. What was you supposed to do, tickle them? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, golly. It's just crazy. And I, I hope every single person that was sitting at home heard us boo because we were booing. Like, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it we let great. those refs have it. Was great. It was great. It was great. But we held them to a field goal. And, man, I think just moving forward, yeah, you're right, Adam. These guys are going to get better. With more experience, the, the linebackers, I think, talking about the speed, yeah. you know, that – to me, once again, that's not a uh, that's not necessarily because of their physical attributes. That's mm-hmm. not a speed issue per se. I think it's just I think it's a game speed. It's just, getting getting the game speed, getting read, getting you know, getting yeah. them instincts. It's an awareness thing. Yeah, it's, it's there we seeing, go. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> awareness. It's an awareness. Yeah, deal. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, but uh, but yeah, they're going to improve. And um, Will Muschamp, they've they he has his hands all in this. Yeah, Schumann and Kirby. I, I like this team. One thing I know one thing I know is too, Clark, Schumann's down on the field this year. Oh, he's, he's been on the booth, but he's down on the field yeah. this year. It seemed like yesterday. Um, well, I thought I saw him in a, in a replay when I was watching the game earlier yeah. on down there. So uh, that, that that's interesting, too, to see. But uh, th- these guys are going to be good, Clark. I mean, all around this team is just special, man. They are. It's special. Yep. Go ahead, book your tickets, Los Angeles people. Go ahead, get some flights <laughs> lined up. Go ahead, get the. I mean, go ahead, do it. Go ahead, go, go ahead, go ahead. I'm you can, you, you can cancel. I mean, you can cancel, but you're not going to have to cancel. Yeah. Go ahead and do it, man. If you missed them playing the national championship last year, you're not going to want to miss it this year. No, that team, man, that was. Oh, I can't get over it, Clark. Yeah, I woke up this morning just, just juiced, just juiced. Did you sleep much last night? I didn't Cali sleep. At, no, I didn't sleep much last night. But uh, we were, um, we were, we were. It, it was just because we were still. It was okay. Woke up this morning, just excited as could be. There you go. And just had to pinch myself all over again. What happened yesterday, Clark? I mean, just sitting in that stadium, looking around at the just dominant fashion that Georgia played mm-hmm. on the national televised stage, and realizing the statement that it made to the country of where this team is back and where it's going to go this year, and and then looking at everybody else play, Clark. Uh, the, the conference, man, it's. Georgia, it's Alabama and Georgia, it's Georgia, Alabama, and then it's everybody else. Mm-hmm. Nobody else is in the same stratosphere as these teams, man. And I mean, really, the 
they're going to go 12 and 0 if there's not an injury bug. If they play, I mean, any given Saturday in the SEC, yes. But if they play to what the, to the potential they're capable of playing and the mindset stays where it's at, the accountability, complacency don't set in, they don't get too arrogant. And it is not. A Kirby Smart football, coach football team, or the leaders on this team is not going to let this happen, Clark. Mm-hmm. Man, it's going to be special. Yeah. Special teams, Adam, we didn't see many uh, other than kickoff. Hey, we had a good kickoff. We had a, had a good, kickoff. good kickoff. Brett Thorson got in there, and he got a late-game punt. Yeah, and I right. thought it was a good point. I think it's there was solid contact punt. made with the ball there. Yeah. Clark, I really liked it. I liked the trajectory mm-hmm. um, of the punt, you know, and um, I, I really think uh, that that was good. I, I liked our, our um, the guys that we have out there. Lad McConkey's returning on punts, and then you get Kyrus Jackson on the kick return mm-hmm. game, Clark. And um, guys on the kickoff team, Dan Jackson, of course, getting down there making plays, man. Marcus Rosemary, Jet Saint. That's what I like about Kirby, man. He, he's going to recruit these guys, and he's not. He's going to put playmakers, as we talked about, on special teams and treat special teams as a time where you can really win football games, having your elite athletes out there. They're making yep. plays, and it'll keep on uh, being that way uh, throughout this season. And there will be plays made in the special teams part of the game that will swing momentum one way or another and uh, and, and be huge for Georgia, yep. as we saw last year. with block field goals and punts and everything. Yeah. Did you know Thorson is the, uh, the dog who has traveled the furthest to play football at the University of Georgia? Did you know that? It's got to be from Australia. Yeah, he's Australian. I mean, I mean, I mean, a lot of punters are from Australia yeah. these days. Yeah, he did hit a 53-yard punt. It's beautiful. Yep. Um, Jackpot, you know, right on the money with extra points. That's I mean, good. not, not hey, much to good. say about that's special good. teams, but uh, yeah. maybe we'll see. No, it was good. It was good. Yeah. It was good. So, man, I mean, all around Clark, that game, it couldn't have went better for a Georgia fan. Uh, riding on a cloud, man. Uh, we just talked about it. It is uh, it, it, It's unreal. Yep. It, it is truly unbelievable what they came out there and did on week one, Clark. I know. All right, moving on. Georgia versus Sam. Sam. Big game. Big game. S-A-M-F-O-R-D. Sanford in Sanford. Yes. Please don't call Sanford Stadium Stanford Stadium. (laughs) Uh, That that drives me up a wall. Anyway. Yeah, Georgia versus Sam Ford at home this Saturday, Mm -hmm. 4 o'clock. SEC Network. If you're not going. Nice. You got a good, uh, you got some time to settle in, you know, grills. Real yep. something and yeah, 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 man. Family I mean, you got Alabama and Texas, the big noon kickoff on Fox coming up. That, that so start watching it, getting fired up for right. some Georgia versus Sanford. Um, it's gonna be good. This is a family game, so I would encourage everybody to take some some so your significant others, your niece, your nephew, your child, make some memories, go buy some tickets, and say you could you've seen this Georgia football team play. Yep. This is a family game. Go to the dog walk. Uh, go to the bookstore. Probably some somebody there. Um, signing some books gives you some tattoos. To put on the cheek, you know, just make some <laughs> memories, man. Post some pictures on Instagram. Yeah. Let them know you're there. Put them on Facebook. Let them know. And uh, just really make it a game that 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 you can make some memories at, Clark, because it shouldn't be a high-stress game at all. Right. It's a game that you can afford to sit there with somebody and talk. And if it's somebody that doesn't necessarily really talk about football, doesn't break down the game, and you can't handle that in some games. I mean, you can't. You can't handle yeah. that in some games. You, people have to be dialed in and focused but on some games. But if this is a, a charity game, for, say, if you want to bring somebody who, who uh, wants to go and – you just don't know if their football knowledge is there, and right. like, you, you bring them to this where you game. Test the you waters. bring them to this game. You test the waters, and if they don't want to talk about football, they want to talk about something else. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. So anyway, that, again, we'll, we'll talk about that. So yes, Adam, yes. this is a family game. It's also a cheerleading game, and the reason I say that is because you can and will hear the cheerleaders uh, in the fourth quarter of this game. Yes. It's going to be really quiet because yes. everybody's going to try to be yes. beating yes. traffic. Yes, 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 yes. Anyway, yeah, George versus Sanford. Don't know much about the Bulldogs from Sanford. I do know they're located in Alabama. Yes, uh, they are. Uh, um, Kirby's dad played played, played at Sanford. Uh, Chris Hatcher is the head coach there. Guys, coach at Georgia Southern before. Was the head coach of Aldosa State when Muschamp and Kirby were there? I think Muschamp was there with them too. I know Kirby was. So a guy that uh, has some connections with Kirby Smart okay. for many years, man. I think he's a respected coach around as a uh, coach at Murray State um, as well. And uh, somebody I think who was uh, very uh, highly regarded in that community. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be a game where um, um, I get ahead, but then really, 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 and I mean really call off the dog. Yeah. 
you know, we might see um, Brock and uh, surely we'll see Brock and or Gunner in this game. I'd imagine. I mean, we're going to see. I, I, I don't think Stetson Bennett should play in the second quarter. I really think. It's I really be, don't think Stetson should play at all. Oh, I mean, I, just, yeah, but yeah. I agree, if, we're, but, if we're trying to get Stetson to New York, we got to pad those numbers a little bit. Yeah, I, I really think it's going to be the thing that you see most of your guys come out after the first quarter because the only thing that could derail this train right now is an injury. Yeah. In my opinion, it's key injuries, and you don't want to do it against Sanford. True. Um, of course, some of it's just unavoidable. You're going to have that as part of the game of football. Right. But uh, I think that's something that's going to be seen is a lot of your key guys are going to come out after the first quarter. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, it's like 28 nothing going in the second quarter, mm-hmm. 21 nothing, And then uh, it's such valuable time to get these young guys some reps, man. Yeah. Get some game speed catching up with them, a good learning time. Mm-hmm. Uh, make some mistakes, learn, learn on it and everything, and just keep building. Keep yeah. building. That's what's so great about these games for, sure. for a coaching staff and the team getting to play. And it's not just Sanford we get to rotate guys in and out. It's it's Oregon, and it's going to be South yep. Carolina and, and teams to come. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. We're, we're investing in the future. When Kirby and these guys decide to call off the dogs, yep. even in the big yep. games, that we're just investing in the next generation yeah. of That's the right. Dogs, That's so. right, Clark. I mean, I'm telling you, the key to this game is just continue to do your routine, your pregame routine. Continue to do your routine of everything that you do going into a football game and getting better at it and just each play getting better and uh, just working on that, building team chemistry, building leadership, getting these guys reps, man, and just getting better and uh, just going out there playing the ball you can yep. and um, being disciplined, not doing anything stupid and uh, be fine, win this game in a big fashion. It's going to be a fun day for all. Yeah. And uh, and something. Then start SEC play the next week in Columbia, South Carolina. That's my key to this game. <laughs> my key I mean, to the special. game, Adam, is literally it, three words. Just go play. And it's going to be running the football a lot, Clark. Oh, yeah. Let's shorten this yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be running the football a lot. I, feel I like, completely agree. Especially in the second half. So, Adam, you predicted this correctly. The first play from offensive scrimmage. What do you got this week? Last week you called the draw to Ken. Not you said. I said Kenny McIntosh. Kenny but it, was, it was Kendall Milton. What they got the first tote? I think it was Kenny McIntosh. Was it? I, well, again, I, I couldn't don't know. see the numbers. Couldn't see the numbers <laughs> from up there, so I didn't know. Um, but yeah, it was, and it was. I thought it would be a three yard gain. It was a three yard gain. Then Kenny. there was a. Then there was a. Um, a pay about a ten yard pass for a first down after it. So you know, just just fortune teller call. There just, you go. <laughs> but uh, but no, nah, and I, I think I'm gonna call this time, Clark. It's going to be a little um, a little. Tunnels, a little bubble screen to Lad McConkey on the outside. Oh, gummy. Is that I, what you're going to say? I promise yes. you that was hey, no, no, But, yes, it's going to be a little quick okay. pass out to the outside of Lad McConkey. He's going to pick up about six or seven yards ah. on that. Heck, might even get a first down off of it because he's going to get a good block on the cornerback okay. on the outside right there and uh, um, and, and scam. That's what I'm going to call hey, with. It's great minds think so alike. There you go. There and you go. I guarantee you Monkey's probably thinking the same thing. Oh, so. of course he is. Why would he not? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Let's go back in time a little bit. Last week's pick them. We yep. had some great games. Cincinnati at Arkansas. Didn't get to watch much of this. Adam, let me, right quick, let me start pulling up some of these scores. I fumbled on this. Um, it was 31 24, wasn't it? Arkansas, I Cincinnati. So. Arkansas beat Cincinnati 31 to 24, I believe. Yeah, um, it was a great game. 31 uh, 24. Yep. Arkansas covered. Big win. Big win for big Sam win. Pittman. Big win for Sam Pittman. Big win for the Razorback faithful, man. Uh, you know, they're juiced and got a big game coming up this week as well. Yeah, they do. Um, Arkansas, I'm telling you, I made a bet, Adam, and I don't – I shouldn't I, – I, I made one bet this season for yeah. $50. $50, so okay. Big old Chris Johnson out there, my good buddy, Miami fan, and uh, I bet him $50 that Arkansas – We'll win nine games. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Eight push. We'll see. We'll, see. And seven. well, they're off to a good start, man. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, that was that was a good one. Uh, this was also a heck of a game, man. Florida barely squeaked this one out. Wow. Twenty nine to twenty six over Utah. You talk about an hell biter, Clark. Right there, it looked like Utah was going to drive down, score a touchdown, at least kick a field goal, and take it in overtime, throw a pick in the end zone. Excitement and pandemonium for the Florida fans. They're fired up about some Billy Napier coming and in. Anthony there. Richardson. And Anthony Richardson, oh, man. But, but what what stood out to me about that game, Clark, was the humidity. You always hear you talk about teams coming from the Midwest, yeah. out west, coming to play an early September game down in the deep 
deep south, man, and it's just a different kind of humidity. You can't replicate it in an indoor practice facility. How, right. how much ever you how you, you try to do it, you can't do it. You can't do it. And um, you could tell. You could just tell watching it on TV on the sidelines, just the sweat pouring off of them and the tiredness. That defense was done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And I think a big factor of that wasn't necessarily just the condition and, and shape they were, but the, the humidity was just so much for them that they couldn't handle it, I feel like. Mm-hmm. But Florida, give them credit. They kept answering. They pulled away there at the end. That's very exciting for them. Got a big opportunity next week against Kentucky yep. to start 2-0 and and really gain some uh, momentum in year one of Billy Napier, man, and really kind of change the culture there. And, you know, I, I want Florida to lose every single football game, Clark. I'm a Georgia <laughs> fan. I do. I yeah. want to see them demoralized and come in uh, over in Jacksonville. But I do get some good feeling when they have hope and we just demoralize them in right. Jacksonville as well. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, what happens there. Um, got some big games, of course, before then. But um, a good test for them again is going to be, can they keep it up? It, and it's going to be interesting, the coaching job that Billy Napier can do um, going against Kentucky next week, Clark. Uh, do you, that high, do you have a letdown? Or where's mm. the focus going to be at? So mm. we'll see. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, Florida's looking a little bit better than I thought they would be. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll see. Okay, Notre Dame and Ohio State, another great game for a little while, and then Ohio State pulled away 21-10. The Buckeyes sneak out of their yeah. – no, they don't sneak out of Ohio with a win, but <laughs> anyway. Hey, yeah, I, I was going to say, Clark, uh, that game, man, um, a game I missed as far as well, – I missed, I picked Utah out, right, to beat Florida, and that didn't happen. In this game, I thought Ohio State would absolutely just smoke them. Mm-hmm. I mean, start scoring at will from the beginning to the very end. I was wrong on that. Notre Dame's defense came to play and uh, really didn't pull away till later in the second half, yeah. Clark. Um, uh, but the, uh, the one thing, though, you can say, well, Ohio State's offense didn't look as good. But the thing you can say is Ohio State's defense under new defense coordinator Jim Knowles looked much much improved, man. Right. A lot of hype about him really building this defense up to a a, uh, a competitive uh, level and really one where they're really focusing in on is playing the SEC schools, the Alabamas, the Georgias, the Cle- or even the Clemsons in the playoff, yeah. getting there. And uh, and they look good against Marcus Freeman's uh, Notre Dame fighting Irish there in, um, in, uh, in Columbus. But uh, honestly, I didn't think if you would have told me that Ohio State would only score three touchdowns, I would have thought you were crazy, man. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, very interesting game. You just never know. You just never know. But defense think- looked good. You think Notre Dame's out of it, or yeah, yeah, Notre Dame's out of it. I think they're going to lose again, man. Um, wow. Marcus Freeman, we'll, we'll see what he's made out of and what's going to happen the rest of the year. But uh, I think they will lose again. Um, I, I think they're out of it. I do. I think as Notre Dame um, playing an independent, and I think as it should be to make the college football playoff, you got to go undefeated with your schedule. Yep. That is especially not playing in a conference right. game, as, right. a conference championship game as well. So, yeah, yeah. We're watching this game right now, Florida State versus LSU. Uh, we don't know the the winner, but you do if you're listening to this. <laughs> that is true. I mean, we didn't think about that. No, did we, we, we didn't think about well, that. Well, yeah, maybe we should have stuck with <laughs> our we Saturday did that, games. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, yeah, we're filming uh, on Sunday, September. 4th, oh yeah. So. yeah anyway, yeah. Oh. Uh, dang, that, that was a blunder. I guess that was a blunder, Clark. TBD. Didn't think about that when we picked them. Yeah, TBD, and then the nah. next game, clips in that Georgia Tech. What were we doing? How did we not think about that? We recorded this. Oh, oh gosh, I don't my know. Oh, God. Um, okay. All right. I think it's pretty safe to say, though, at least for the Clemson-Georgia Tech game, Clemson's going <laughs> – I don't know. Yeah, who, I, who, know who knows? Who knows? Yeah, but, nah, Clemson's going to beat them pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. But anyway, get to the game that matters, Clark. Yes. Get to the game that matters last week. <laughs> the only game that matters. Uh, Hillsdale Chargers at Lake Erie College Storm. This was our game of the week last week. Adam, you pe- you picked Lake Erie. I did. I chose Hillsdale. Adam, who won? Um, uh, Hillsdale did win, Clark. You got yes. it. I think you, you did the clean sweep of your picks, didn't you? Um, assuming, assuming the other LSU ones wins come to and like you think. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I thought Lake Erie, um, after breaking that streak last year, right. really would build some momentum and capitalize on that and get a W, and especially playing at home. And uh, and and Russell died again, a buddy of mine said article on how that game played out hillsdale came storming back with a late late serious? game win um yes late heroic so heartbreaker for lake erie man i think they lost 35 31 closer than what it has been in the past but congratulations clark your chargers did come out Good. victorious from Good. lake erie it's hard to go into lake erie and win a football game That's but hillsdale true. did it <laughs> i'm sure it's just an intimidating it's environment it's yeah oh gosh all right which brings us to this week's pick'em. we got south carolina 
at Arkansas. Ooh. 12 o'clock. Oh, that's a nooner too, noon Clark? Noon kickoff. That's a nooner. That's an 11 a.m. Central in Arkansas, yeah. isn't it? Okay. Who you got, Clark? I'm going to take Arkansas. I like Sam Pittman. Uh, I watched South Carolina play. They did not impress me mm. against the Georgia mm. State Panthers. Um, Arkansas, man, K.J. Jefferson looked good the other day. I think Sam Pittman's going to roll right over. Nice guy. Shane, Shane Beamer. Beamer. All right, man. Give it to me. Give me the Razorbacks as well, Clark. Give me a 35-24 uh, win. Okay. 35-24 right. Razorbacks. Right. Dang, I think – I don't know, man. I I think it could be more like 35-10. to really? 10. really? I really I, do. I, I don't know. I'm telling know, you man. now, this, this, this Arkansas <laughs> defense. We're going to find out. I'm excited about that game. That's one that's really high up there for me. Yeah. Oh, this one has been circled on lots of people's calendars. Yes. Alabama at Texas, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Fox. Man, I mean, look, I think we Big all noon. know I think we all know what's going to happen in this game, but hey, it's at Texas. I, yeah, Clark. Uh, voice keeps squeaking every time <laughs> after a game. It's so, so sore. But anyway, yeah, at Texas, Clark, they're going to be excited about that. Steve Sarkeesian in year two, a guy that Saban really loved having as his offensive coordinator, a guy who's who's trying to put the program in place in Texas and still that Alabama way that he learned. Actually, a guy who has brought in some transfers from the Alabama uh, offense there. And um, I think it's going to be a very interesting game. I think it might be uh, close there for a little bit. But I think in the long run, Alabama's going to win this game 48 to 24. 49, 49, 24. Okay. That's what I'm going to go with. I like it. Might be 49, 17. I think think that score is more doable than the other. You think so? Yeah. No. I'm going to go with Alabama big. That's what I'll say. Texas is my team, though, to kind of – they're not going to make it to the playoff or anything. But they are going to shock some people. I don't think they win this game. Shock some people in the Big 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I got you. Exactly, exactly. They may beat Baylor or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, But certainly not Alabama. Here's another great game, Adam. I didn't realize this yeah. game was being played. Tennessee at Pittsburgh, 3.30, yeah. not CBS. ABC, this is played in Pittsburgh. All right. Who do you like? Um, Clark, I tell you what, man, Pittsburgh is coming off a uh, – they both played on a Thursday night, Tennessee right. and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is coming off a big emotional win against a historic rival uh, who they hadn't played in a while in West Virginia. That place was rocking the other night. Um, a big win, sky-high feeling, man, coming off the ACC championship as well last year. Keaton Slovis, the USC transfer, leading the way. New offensive coordinator, um, new scheme. Um, at, at home again, I think it's going to be a letdown for them. I think it's going to be a letdown after that West Virginia game. Tennessee is a team who really has some confidence. Hendon Hooker looked very good. The offense did against Ball State last Thursday night. A team that got beat by Pittsburgh last year. Looking for some revenge. Don't want to get swept by them and go 0 for 2 in this series right here. And uh, I think Tennessee is going to get it done on the road at Pittsburgh. Um, I don't know a score. I think it's going to be closer than what we think. But Tennessee wins by about 10 points, I think. Okay. I like that. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength here. Tennessee by, I'd say, about, yeah, 10. Yeah. 10 or 13. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Hendon Hooker looked really, really impressive against Ball State. Yes. yes I don't even know where Ball State is. Nah, somewhere up there in Ohio probably. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Kentucky at Florida, another great game. 7 o'clock, ESPN in the Swamp. We just kind of alluded to this game. Adam, who do you like in this one? I like this game, Clark. I like it. It's going to have a – this is kind of one of the first games that we're going to get to gauge the East. What's going to happen in the SEC East, man? Um, We talked about it. Florida can make a big statement with Billy Napier going 2-0 to start the season with big wins over Utah and Kentucky. Or Kentucky can do it, man, getting uh, multiple wins against – yeah, Yeah. beating Florida two years in a row for the first time in – Lord knows how long, and uh, kind of establishing their self and getting the hype train built up over there. Um, I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be a game that is uh, down the wire closer than what we think. But after, I, if you would ask me this before the season began, before I saw any football being um, teed off, I would have thought that uh, that Kentucky would have won this game. And um, But now I've changed my mind on that, Clark, after watching both teams uh, Saturday night. I think it is going to be Florida winning this football game, Clark. Mm. I think they're going to win a close one there at the end of the game at home riding the momentum after last week even though there was a let and again though Clark that letdown um play goes into play here I mean what's it going to be what's the coaching job going to be where's the focus going to be after a big win over a top 10 program to open up the season or is there going to be some complacency uh and a hangover kind of this week against Kentucky or are they going to keep building on it so I think Florida is going to win this football game Kentucky's got a lot of young guys going to make their first SEC road trip in a hostile environment it's going to be rocking night game in the 
swamp. Give me Florida. Yeah, I'm, God, I hate taking the Gators. I but, do too. But and uh, you know Kentucky, they did not look <coughs> very good the other night playing Miami of Ohio. No, no they didn't. Um, no, they they didn't. struggled. So yeah, Florida. I mean Anthony Richardson, he he, he does look good. Yep. Um, but well, let's pump the brakes a little bit, right. Florida fans. That's right. Pump you're going to run pump into a, a brick bit. wall come that's right November right? that's right yeah, no, no, November. No, not, late October baby. late October I was in November, November 12th or November 2nd this year it might be I don't know I don't know November. it's somewhere in there. yeah it's, no, it's October like 29th or something okay that's well, sometimes it like it's played in November but uh, yeah November. but uh, that Halloween weekend baby sure, there we nothing go. better there nothing we better go. there we go oh my gosh all right the game of the week my favorite part of Row 60, I think. <laughs> There's a lot of favorite this parts. This is a good time. But this, this is a good time. Who do we got? Where are we going to in the country this week, Clark? Okay, we're going to Massachusetts, Adam. Oh. For St. John Fisher University, the Cardinals at Framing, Framingham State Rams. Mm. This is, this good is mascots. A great good mascot. noon kickoff game yeah. right here. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So St. John Fisher University got a couple of fun facts. They're from New York. Yes, All right. yes. They have the annual Teddy Dance for Love. It's a 24-hour dance marathon started by this guy named Lou Bettino okay. in 1983. Yeah. And it benefits Camp Good Days and Special Times Incorporated. Okay. Uh, this project funds a trip to Florida for the children of Camp Good Days and has raised over a million dollars since its inception. That's awesome, man. That's I'm, right. always, I'm always for raising money for the children yes. and for goodwill like that, so that's yeah. that's good on them. Good on them. Maybe they're taking them to Disney. If good on them, them yeah. Also, a notable alumni. Okay. Uh, is it alumni or alum or alumnus? An alumnus. I'm going with that. Edward W. Stack, he's a billionaire businessman, Adam, who was a chairman and chief executive officer, CEO, of Dick's Ah. Sporting Goods from 1984 to 2021. Interesting. Uh, He was the son of Dick's Sporting Goods founder, Richard Dick Stack. Makes sense. Okay. That's interesting. That is good. That's a good fun fact. (laughs) And my last fun fact about St. John Fisher University is there one to know on the season, Adam? They I both bet. raced Undefeated. Buffalo State oh. like forty-five to nothing, I think. Mm. Dang! So, All right, We're that's good. good. That's good. Good. All right, what we got there? And then we got Framingham State, the Rams. They're from Massachusetts. That's where this game will be played. Okay. Uh, 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 someone by the name of Krista uh, Mc- M- McAfee. Some McAfee. Oh, McAfee. Okay. Something like right, that. All right. Uh, she was an astronaut. Actually, died in the space shuttle. Oh, really? Disaster. I'll be Do dying. you remember that? Right now, I wasn't alive then, but I've seen. What it. year was that? It was like 1986. Oh, I thought that was in the 90s. The Challenger. I don't know why I thought that was in the 90s. No nah, man, that was I've got my. Head. I need to go back. Clark, he didn't learn some history, brother. <laughs> oh, uh, anyway, 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 I didn't know growing <laughs> like a weed that analogy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But oh <laughs> man, I'm struggling. Um. Anyway, and then Adam, this one's cool. Ruth Graves Wakefield, the inventor of the chocolate chip cookie, nice, went to Framingham State. Awesome. So that's cool. Awesome. That is cool. That's the best fact you gave me, right? Yeah. Now. But now their football team is struggling this year. They're 0 and 2 on this season and have been outscored by opponents 62 to 7 in their first two games. That's terrible. <sighs> Clark, that's rough, man. I, I don't I did. <sighs> man, yeah. I'm definitely going with the St. John Fisher University Cardinals Clark. Oh, really? There's no doubt, man. If they're yeah. 0 and 2, it looks like just uh um Framingham State is just in a debacle right now. There, the yeah. program is in shambles. Going ahead and start the season zero and three. Uh, the forum is going to be lit up with uh, with with. Um, I, I'm sure he's a good guy, but uh, but talk about firing the coach, getting them out of uh, getting them out of Massachusetts yeah. there, and, uh, and and get somebody better who can bring the program to his former glory. Um, I do not think. The team is really bought in this early in the season right, already. Oh, to, the, 0-2, culture. to yeah. the culture, and I don't think it's going to start this week oh, okay. up in um, New York. Uh, well, no, at Framing- at Fra- oh, it is at Framingham State. I do not think it's going to start this week at home. I think they're going to get boat raced at home, and a lot of questions, and a uh, and the locals are going to be asking a lot of lot of questions, and um, the morning breakfast place is going to be filled with a lot of disgruntled <laughs> fans, oh, my and gosh. The, the coach could be out by by the end of next week. <laughs> In the next the week, question I, is, is he fired already. quicker than Scott Frost? Yeah, 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 he will be. He will be. When you're 0-3 before what would be the day, before um, September 17th already, yeah. you're um, yeah, you're, you're in rough shape. You're mm. in rough shape, man. You're in rough shape. So give me give me the Cardinals, Clark. Oh, man. I'm, I'm going with the Cardinals, too. I hate that. I think we just picked every single 
um, winner, the, the same winner. But anyway, I'm going with the Great Cardinals too. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway. Awesome. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. I like right. it. I like it. Good deal. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe Framingham State will get a big upset. We'll yes. see. Okay. Georgia versus Sanford this Saturday, 4 o'clock, SEC Network. Adam, give me your score prediction. Give me a couple things. What you predict's going to happen? Any hot takes you got? I don't have many hot takes, Clark. I really just think it's going to be a, uh, a vanilla game plan. Just come out there. I think it's going to be – we'll see just some of the same dinking and dumping the ball. Maybe one big play that just blows the, blows the lid off everything downfield. Defense is going to play good. A lot of young guys are going to get some touches. A lot of young guys are going to play on both sides of the football. It's going to be a fun day. Everybody's going to have a good time. Georgia is going to win this football game, Clark. I'm going to say 52 to nothing. Nice, nice. 52 to nothing. I love man. it, Adam. I love and it. And I think they will have 35 to 42 points at the end of the first quarter, and then it's going to be one of those things where we really just pound the football, yeah. don't really score in the second half and call off the dogs. And, um, it, yeah, the second half is going to be no forward passes. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't be. <laughs> Adam, we're getting uh, a donut this week. Give me the dogs 56 to nothing. Yes, we're going to put up eight touch. Wait, is that eight? Yeah, eight touchdowns yes, sir, against the Sanford Bulldogs, and we're going to let the big dog eat this week. So, Oh, I can't wait for another another day in Athens, Georgia, another Saturday. It's going to be fun. Can't wait. It's probably going to be a little toasty. Yeah, it is, Clark. Uh, hopefully good weather. Hopefully the rain stays away, man. It's a nice, beautiful day. Clark, always good to get back into Sanford Stadium, man. First time going back after the national championship. Big time win in Atlanta this past weekend. It's going to be rocking. Expectations are going to be at a fever pitch, man. It's going to be a fun game. Everybody's going to be excited about it. We're recovering right now, Clark. Our board, we're tired. Our voices are struggling, but we're going to be ready to go when Saturday yes. comes. Everybody, get excited about this football team. We've been telling you about this this past month, that it's going to be a special year yet again. They proved it on Saturday, and the train ain't slowing down anytime soon. Either get on board or get run over, folks. Let the rival fans know that Georgia is for real. They already know it. They see it. It's going to be a fun year, baby. Get some tickets. Come watch this team play because you're going to wish you had. Go dogs, baby. Go dogs. <laughs> Oh my gosh.